Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. The October polycatus is intended to imitate one of the larger caddisfly species, commonly called the October caddis. The winged adults are big, bright, and trout love them. This pattern can be used to imitate both the adult stage as well as the pupil stage. Begin by getting one of the hooks firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. You can then load a bobbin with a spool of rusty brown unithread. Get the thread started on the hook shank, leaving a full eye length space behind the back edge of the hook eye. After taking a few wraps rearward, snip off the excess tag. Continue taking thread wraps rearward to build up a thread base that extends all the way back to the start of the hook bend. Then wind your thread forward until it hangs at about the hook point. Get hold of one end of the dark brown Zelon and using a fine tooth comb, brush out the fibers to completely separate them. Next, snip off an inch and a half long length and set it aside. Repeat the process with a second clump of the dark brown Zelon, then do the same to produce two clumps of white Zelon. Spread both the brown and the white Zelon out on your tying table, then place one clump on top of the other, like so. For the next step, you can use whatever type of spring-loaded clip you like, from a cheapy snack clip all the way up to a much more expensive clip specifically designed for fly tying. Place a sheet of Zelon on top of and over the edge of a raised surface, such as a book or a sticky pad. Using one of the clips, sandwich this sheet so they're equal amounts on either side of the clip's edge. It really doesn't have to be exact, just fairly close. Set within easy reach some sticky dubbing wax, a dubbing whirl, a tooth or dubbing brush, and hackle pliers. Remove the cap from the sticky wax so it's ready to go. You're going to have your hands full for the next few steps. Pull down on your bobbin and use your index finger to form a 4 inch long dubbing loop. Take rearward thread wraps down the hook shank over the legs of the loop to lock them in place. Pick up the uncapped dubbing wax and apply a light skim to both legs of the loop. Insert the sheet of Zelon fibers between the two loop strands and let go of the clip as you sandwich the strands together. Pick up your dubbing whirl and hook it in the bottom of the loop. Give the whirl a healthy clockwise spin as if you're looking down on it. This will twist the fibers into a fuzzy rope. Pick up your toothbrush or dubbing brush and use it to fluff out the fibers as best you can. Get hold of the bare thread loop below the Zelon with your hackle pliers, making sure to secure them well. You can then snip the very bottom of the loop to free the whirl. Advance your tying thread forward to the initial tie-in location, then start taking wraps with the extremely fuzzy Zelon dubbing noodle. Pull the fibers back as you take touching wraps forward up the hook shank. Try to end with bare thread behind the hook eye, then snip whatever remains of the dubbing loop off close. Take a few tight wraps of tying thread to make sure everything is well anchored. Using a half-inch tool or just about any tube with a small hole that fits over the hook eye, push the wrapped material rearward back down the hook shank to compress it and provide a little bit of open space behind the hook eye. You really don't need much. Pick up your whip finish tool and use it to do a 4 or 5 turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. Now for the fun part. Fluff out the fibers, then use a brush to sweep them back. You want them nicely spread out and angled slightly rearward. Using very sharp tying scissors, trim the fibers off close to the underside of the hook shank, about like this. Pick up your bobbin again and get the thread started on the hook shank behind the eye and snip the excess tag off close. With the thread re-established, snip a 2 inch length of the hot orange Zelon free from the rest. Pull about a third of that material free while keeping the ends aligned. Loop the midpoint of that segment around the bend of the hook, then twist the fibers tightly and pull the loop up the bend and onto the shank at the rear of the fly. At the front of the fly, bind the fibers to the underside of the hook with tight wraps of tying thread. Reach in with the very tips of your tying scissors and carefully snip the excess hot orange Zelon off close. 
take nice tight thread wraps to further bind the Zilon down and to create a smooth area behind the hook eye for the next step. Once again, brush out a single segment of the dark brown Zilon and snip it off as you did before. Here too, spread the material out and sandwich it in a clip. Set the clip aside with an easy reach. Create the same type of dubbing loop as you did before, but this time with just a single sheet of dark brown fibers. The whole procedure is exactly the same as before. This time, wrap to completely fill in the area behind the hook eye. With the material secured and the excess loop cut off, reach for your whip finish tool and once again use it to do a four or five turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. What you've done is created a darker front face on the fly, similar to the natural insects. Pull down on any downward pointing fibers and use your tying scissors to trim them off close. This will make the bright orange underbelly more visible. Then begin shaping the remaining fibers into a classic kind of teardrop caddis shape. In the end, it should look something like this. You can add floating to ensure the fly floats on the water surface and imitates an adult caddis, or pull it under and get it wet to look like a caddis pupa.